A few weeks ago, I put out a video where I showed the Moonraker MRQ213, which is basically a telescopic whip uh, for HF. I will be doing some more HF antennas, but today I want to focus on two meters FM. Now this is the Hawkins 5 8 antenna. They do several different versions of this. Um, and by the way, as with all my videos, I've not got any sponsorship de deals. I'm not being paid for this. Um, I bought this out of my own pocket. So basically this one is, uh, there's your radiating element there. It comes in two sections. Here you've got a matching stub and a choke and you just stick that on a mast. Uh, I've got my uh, seven meter spider beam mast here. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Um, now, like I say, they do several versions of this. I, I think they do a 77s version. They do a marine version. They do a halfway version as well, which I believe goes um, down to 20 meters. They do a 20 meter version of the uh, half wave. So quite a bit of variety on there. Um, we all know with VHF with two meters, height is might. The higher you get, the better. So I hope this wind noise isn't um, making the audio too difficult. I've tried to shield the mic as much as I can. I've jumped over the border today. I've come up a Welsh mountain. It's uh, quite windy. You can see there's still snow around here. We're in, um, as I filmed this, we're in February, towards the end of February. So uh, quite a bit of snow around here and it has the smallest and most disappointing summit marker you've ever seen in your life. Um, my rucksack is almost as big as the summit marker, but there we go. We're here to play two meters FM today. And uh, I chose this location because A, it's uh, pretty high up. It's uh, Gulf Whiskey, Sierra Whiskey 004. So it's the fourth highest SOTA summit in South Wales. And uh, also the problem with where I live, there's not much in the way of two meters FM. It's kind of the metaphorical dead horse, if you like. Whereas in Wales, there's a bit of a uh, following on two meters FM for SOTA, which is why I decided to come here. So enough rabbiting on, let's get the mast up and uh, let's uh, see what we can do with this uh, tiny piece of wire. Okay, so really quick equipment rundown then running the ICOM 705 there. Got a RG58 coax coming out of it around here. And I know what I've said about RG58 in the past. Um, I also did say to be fair that it has its place and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then uh, seven meter spider beam mast, just a lightweight aluminium stake in the ground there. And I've not got it at full extension because the coax cable isn't long enough and you can probably see it's blowing an absolute hoolie up here. So it's uh, leaning over at a bit of a funny angle. So I, I didn't put it up any more than that because it'll probably fall over. Okay, let's talk about coax cable. Now you might be wondering why I'm filming this segment kneeling down rather than standing up. It's because the wind is so strong it keeps blowing my tripod over for the camera. The camera keeps going over on its side. So RG58, which is what I'm using today. In the past, I've slated RG58 saying it's no good for two meters FM, which is lossy. And that's the reason I said that. But I also said it has its place for portable operations. Um, it's lightweight and it was quite a long hike to get up here today. So I, I didn't really want to be carrying RG213, which isn't particularly flexible and really isn't the right stuff for the job. So I went with RG58 today. It's only a short uh, patch cable, about probably only about four meters long. And I've not got the antenna up at full height anyway, because the mast would just blow over on this mountain. Um, it's the way I see it, it's a bit of a balancing act. We all say height is might, but we're on top of a mountain. There's not much else around here. So I'm not sure how much difference getting the antenna, those extra couple of meters above the ground will actually make. I suspect in our case, those extra few meters loss in the feeder cable would outweigh the benefit of getting the antenna up high. So it's, it's all about compromise. And I think in this case scenario, you just want lightweight. Would I use it at home in a fixed installation? Absolutely not. But as I've said before, RG58, although lossy at two meters, it does have its place. And uh, I think for portable operations, it's uh, probably in this case, well, I've only got a short run of about three or four meters. It's probably the right piece of kit to use. Okay. 
Golf Zero, uh, Romeo, Quebec, Lima. There's a familiar call sign. You're, uh, I'll give you a signal report on the next over, Don. Yeah, Roger, Roger there, James. Good morning for you. Good morning. Yes, it is, mate, in our country, isn't it? <laughs> thanks for coming back and thanks for hearing me, James. Yeah, Roger that. Well, Roger that. Yeah, it's a reed, uh, and it's a sort of a, a buzzy uh, at the end. Blind reed. Blind reed. Um, yeah, so, um, anyway, look, <laughs> Enough of that nonsense. Um, uh, anyway, thanks very much indeed, and uh, great to get you. Don't always get that summit here uh, and my QTH, so that's very good. Thank you very much indeed, James, and have a good activation. I'll say 7-3. Okay, John, well, glad to get you in the log, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pumping out around about 10 watts, so uh, possibly a bit more than uh, a lot of other SOTA stations. Uh, a lot of other SOTA stations might be handheld only. Uh, I've got a 5 8 wave, only about th two or three metres in the air, and uh, pumping 10 watts into that from uh, ICOM 705. So um, that's the uh, that's the setup at this end. Yeah, Roger. Well, I, you, you might have seen the uh, Wellington bomber on the way up. I'm not quite sure the remnants of a, a crash in uh, during the war. Um, <laughs> it's marked on the map, I think, on all the survey map uh, on the one to twenty five thousand as a memorial, I think. Anyway, all the best. Catch you soon. I hope you catch a uh, lot of others on uh, SOTA today, and uh, good luck for the future. Uh, safe journey back. This is GW1BXX now signing clear. Yeah, I read about that bomber when I uh, looked up online. I didn't actually see it coming up. I don't know if it's a little bit off the track. It's uh, I'm using a 1 to 50 order in the survey map, so uh, I don't think it's on that one. As, uh, as you said, I think it's on the 1 to 25. But uh, Who knows, maybe if I come up here again, I'll... Uh, get a more detailed map and uh, go around and take a look. Seven threes and thanks for the contact. Yeah, yeah I've got a wall here but it's, it's orientated in the wrong way so it's not really providing much shelter and it's only about um, half a metre high as well so uh, yeah, it's not really doing much so <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to stay too long unless, it, unless the wind suddenly drops and it becomes really, really sunny. <coughs> yeah, well, don't let yourself get too cold there. I mean, I've uh, I've got my, I've put my waterproofs on just to keep the wind out more than anything because they're windproof and uh, got the gloves on, uh, well, got the glove on one hand. I've uh, had to uh, keep my right hand gloveless so I can uh, type on the iPad because I'm using the iPad for logging. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, understood, understood. I've, I've still got my gloves on, um, but I'm just using the old-fashioned pen and paper. It works really well when it's cold and you need <laughs> to keep your gloves on. Yeah, I thought about resorting to that, but uh, I'd find um, iPad easier for uploading it later on. So that's why I tend to use the iPad uh, if, it, if it's dry anyway. If uh, if it's wet, then uh, I resort to the uh, pen and paper. Uh, I've got a waterproof notepad like the military use. So uh, that's my uh, other alternative if it starts chucking it with rain. Go ahead. Yeah, I've got, I've got a similar one. Yeah, they're really good, those, aren't they? Um, you can use them in all weathers. You just have to uh, you have to peel them apart when you get back home. That's the only problem. Or well, leave them on the radiator a bit before you uh, start trying to uh, read them and do the logging. OK, so quick conclusion then with the Hawkins 5.8's antenna. Um, it's my go-to antenna. It's the one I normally use if ever I do 2 metres FM. And I really like it, personally. I mean... It coils up nice and small, it's lightweight, and that is your antenna. All you need is uh, something to support it. Now I use a seven meter spider beam mast uh, with a spike in the ground and just a uh, bit of elastic to hold the uh, mast on the spike. And uh, that is basically your antenna. That is my antenna. You don't need a big rucksack like this. I bought this because I'm going to be doing a bit of HF after this. So I'd wanted to bring the uh, ICOM 705. Um, if I was running FM only, you can just go for a handheld. And uh, that, with a little bit of feeder cable, that is your radio system. So uh, nice and lightweight for SOTA. And uh, these antennas work really well. So I've been very happy with it. Like I say, not sponsored by them. Don't get anything for any advertising. It's just, uh, it's just what I choose to use.